Americans might be wondering if we'll see a red or blue wave on this election day. Not all may know what exactly these waves are. Joining us now to answer that question, CBS News senior political analyst John Dickerson, also the host of CBS News' Prime Time with John Dickerson. So what constitutes a political wave? Well, we can go by the numbers. So if it's around 26 or 27 seats, that's the a number of seats that an in-party usually loses in an, a midterm election. But if the president's approval rating is below 50 percent, they lose somewhere closer to 35 or 36. So that would be tradition. So is that a wave or not? If it goes with history, is that a wave or not? If it's more than that, we know it's a wave. But what happens if it's 20, if it's 19, if it's 18? And then the question is, where do these victories take place? Do they take place deep inside blue territory, places where, say, the 10th district of Virginia, where the first lady was just campaigning this week, where Kevin McCarthy was campaigning on Tuesday? That's a district that Joe Biden won with 58 percent of the vote. If Democrats are losing in districts where Joe Biden won with 58 percent of the vote, then you can pretty much say it's a Republican wave. John, to what extent does the immediate reaction to, these, to, the, to today's election results differ from their historical significance? For example, if Republicans do overwhelmingly take the House and Senate and pundits say Democrats got shellacked, is that interpretation something that could change as time passes? Usually what changes as time passes is the, the hot takes that people have on the East Coast. When the results start coming in on the East Coast and everybody tries to come up with a storyline for the night, then what happens is as the results happen across the country, what happens, sometimes they're different than what's happened on the East Coast, and everybody kind of revises it later. But usually once you get a day or two ahead, the, the question of whether it's a shellacking or not is usually determined by the losing team's president um, when they give a press conference the next day. So whatever term Joe Biden uses tomorrow, it could be, not a lot of people are betting on this, but it could be glee um, because the Democrats have done well. So whatever term Joe Biden uses is usually the one. And then the real second guessing comes when the pollsters and analysts look at the polling numbers, look at the exit poll data, and then draw conclusions. And that matters because it's those conclusions that determine the heading for both parties going into the next election. How did they do with black voters, Latino voters, women in the suburbs, and so forth? Remember in 2006, after Republicans were voted out of Congress, President George W. Bush called it a thumping. Yeah. And in 2010, it was President Obama calling it a shellacking. Then in 2018, it was Donald Trump reading the names of Republicans who'd lost and taunting them yeah. for having lost. So the president does define what happens the next day. I'm just wondering, because we've seen three of these sweep elections in the last 16 years, are these midterms different now than they used to be? Well, they're different than they used to be when Democrats had control of the House for 40 years. Right. So... 1994 really kind of changed things. But, you know, yeah, the Senate has changed hands seven times in the last 40 years. The House has changed hands 40 times. Uh, the president's party that goes into a midterm with unified control of Congress has not kept that through a midterm going back to 1978. So the norm is, is convulsion. Um, of course, what's different is the thing that you've been covering so closely, Scott, is the fact that so many people who are running deny that the election process, which they're hoping will elect them, they deny the faith in that election process for the last time. That's the real thing that makes this such a, a different election. And it's what makes this an ideal, uh, 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 an intellectual question of a wave. In other words, Donald Trump has sold the idea in his party that the election was stolen to the majority of people running. That's a red wave whether they win or not. I mean, it's an intellectual wave that he has cast throughout his whole party. That's not the way that term is usually used, mm -hmm. but it is something that is such a different part of our politics, that's one of the central changes in this election we're having tonight. What will you be talking about, about this election tomorrow, regardless of the outcome? Whether it was carried off safely, and so far it has been, um, and without incident. You know, the last election, all the people who wear those stickers, and they're so proud of voting no matter what party they're in, that was smeared in the last election by President Trump. So can we have an election where that smear is removed, where everybody goes through the process and abides by it? Both winners and losers, they have a role to play in how this. So that's what I'll be talking about, is evaluating how that happened. And then the question will be not just control, who controls, but the margins. We saw what thin margins do for the president's party. He has the thinnest margin a Democrat has ever had in the history of Democratic politics. So what's the margin going to look like? Because the margin determines how much power majority leaders and speakers have to do the governing that they've been elected to do. All right, John Dickerson on it all night. Thanks, Nikki.